guys, welcome to our first episode of our brand new podcast, Meet Your Pulse. I'm Mia Nunez. And I'm Isabel Perea. Coming up in this episode, we have our interview with senior Quinn Deegan, Coach Quinn, and Coach Marasa. We hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, welcome to Meteor Pulse and welcome to our first episode. I'm here with my co-host Mia Nunez and senior Quinn Deegan. And today we're going to talk about um, our Spirit Week recap and just go really deep into what was happening that week. Yeah, so I thought Spirit Week went really well. Uh, Monday we had PJ Day, Tuesday was Twin Day, Wednesday Flannel vs. Floral, Thursday was Sports Day, and Friday was 70s Day because your know, homecoming theme dance was 70s disco. Oh. Um, or also you can wear a spirit shirt. Um, but yeah, so I thought, you know, being mayor and everything, obviously I was there from day one planning everything. We plan, we actually planned the spirit days back in August. We went on a retreat. Mm -hmm. So we planned them pretty far ahead in advance. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so we kind of already knew what we were doing. Um, so I thought that, you know, that preparation helped for Spirit Week because, you know, some people really got into the Spirit Days. <laughs> <laughs> some people really got into Spirit Days. Um, and, you know, we had a lot of positive feedback uh, from those Spirit Days. Yes, uh, we did. Yeah. Um, so, Quinn, thanks for joining us today. <laughs> thanks, thanks for, for being our me. first student interviewee. Um, so we just want to talk about, like, you were the one who had the most spirit. It stood out to most students and faculty. And I know you know that you had the best outfit. <laughs> yeah. um, but so can you just give me a recap of what you wore Monday through Friday? All right, so Monday I wore, I didn't go as in the spirit as the other days. Mm -hmm. I was a cookie monster. I was trying to like recap as a freshman. I think I was either Winnie the Pooh or Cookie Monster. So I kind of alternated. Okay, the days. Full freshman. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then Tuesday, uh, it was twin day. And me and uh, senior Justin Salamanca, we were both frat boys. And our inspiration came from wanting to be something that we didn't think many people would sort of think of dressing up as. Yeah. So we kind of took any stereotypical like male frat boy uh -huh. and we dressed up as it. Yeah. And Jocelyn was doing her thing. Like she, I loved her outfit that she had. And I was like, you know, what can I do to really stand out? So I woke up at like 5 a.m. that day and I fixed my hair back. I like, I just went above and beyond. Um, and I was actually super proud of that. Then Wednesday was flannel versus floral. <laughs> I couldn't decide <laughs> what to wear, so I wore um, sweatpants and I wore a floral, like a Hawaiian t-shirt underneath and then a flannel over it. So we kind of get the best of both worlds. Okay. Then Thursday oh, yeah. was sports day. I had to rep living on the north side. I had to rep the Cubs. No. I know that we're on the south side forever. <laughs> south side forever. <laughs> I know that De La Salle is obviously on the south side and right across the street from the Sox Stadium, but I had to represent. Um, and then Friday, I, instead of our spirit shirts, which actually I really liked our spirit shirt designs. Oh, yeah. Those were super really good. Cool. Good job. Yeah. Kind of hasn't been done. That's think, for a homecoming. Super shirt, original. So yeah. 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 Um, but I wanted to go above and beyond. I planned a week ahead of time, trying to figure out what the best to wear. Yeah. So the day, the night of, I went to Spirit Halloween. I got some <laughs> stuff, and I wanted to figure out how can I stand out. So the morning of, I woke up at like five five again. <laughs> And I gelled my hair back with hair spackle, Vaseline, oh my God. <laughs> and black hair dye. And then I put the facial hair on, and then I got a wig, and my mom helped me cut it up, and I kind of actually used eye eyelash glue, and I okay. kind of put it on my chest for the chest hair. Um, and then I had the shirt on, and I was just trying to look super 70s and kind of like get all the freshmen and underclassmen really involved in it. So. Yeah, I think yeah. you did a great job of executing all your outfits. And Thank you. And you really put dedication in, which I think is why we have you here. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, so you're very dedicated, and I, I give you props to that. <laughs> Waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning is something I know I would very not want to do. Very early, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I thought that was super awesome, and I definitely think, even like I said before, like faculty and the students really saw you and be like, hey, like, maybe next year we like, I got a one-up quit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it kind of set a competition. Oh, yeah. yeah. Better. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for the spring, we're definitely thinking about, you know, making a spirit king and queen, because everybody really got into it this week. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's a great idea. idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so kind of, you idea. know, kind of getting an incentive, getting more student involvement mm -hmm. yeah. um, within that. Yeah, and I think awesome. definitely it being your senior year made it more you know, yeah. really more special to you because this was your last spirit week ever here at De La Salle. And like, I know you talked about your freshman week here, at, um, your freshman spirit week at De La Salle, which I know was a couple, couple years ago. Couple years ago, um, yeah. But I think, you know, wearing that Cookie Monster suit um, 
beginning of your freshman year and now wearing it at the end of your senior year. It's kind of a full circle moment for you. Yeah, and I really wanted to stick out senior year and kind oh, of yeah. make like a footprint. And hopefully people are like, oh my gosh, remember that that frat boy? Or, oh, remember <laughs> the guy with the big hair? Oh, yeah, and I think you've definitely sparked some yeah. <laughs> for the yeah. rest of them. Awesome. Yeah, I know it's because it was also my senior year and I know all of our seniors yeah. years We definitely did want to make you know our own stance on what we wanted spirit week to be because it's our last spirit week Not only at De La Salle, but last spirit week ever unfortunately um, So I did try to go out, but I did not want to <laughs> unfortunately. Um, But I mean you did a really great job and I know that there are still some students that Were dressing up pretty awesome, too. Yeah, so I think you definitely had a competition. Some, but yeah, for sure won. <laughs> Thank you um, and I think at the pep rally too. I know you were you were tied on tie between when we had to when we were competing against um, Elijah, I believe his name, mm -hmm, yeah. um, the junior, and unfortunately he won. But you did make your stand with your little dance moves, and it was very yeah. Cool. <laughs> thank you, thank of you. Of course. Anything well, else? Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thanks for coming and taking your time today and, and interviewing with us. And I think it's really awesome. And I think even the um, people, listeners would love to hear, love to see your imp um, inspiration where they came from. Right. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for having me. And honestly, like the inspiration is just kind of like me trying to be me because I feel like high school is all about finding yourself. Yeah. So as like a way to kind of push underclassmen because I know not a lot of the underclassmen. I know when I was a freshman, I didn't really want to be not noticeable because it was my first year mm -hmm. so basically just like s stick out and try to be yourself and honestly be as goofy as you can find the most funniest <laughs> hilarious costumes ever great advice well thanks mm -hmm. so much Quinn yeah uh, coming up we have two interviews that Isela and I conducted Isela was with coach Quinn and I was with Marasa so stay tuned stay tuned guys hello meteors I'm here with coach Quinn and we're today we're going to be doing the 100 yard dash Good morning, Coach Ben. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing good. It's a little bit cold this morning, but we're managing. All right. Happy homecoming week. Oh, yeah. Happy homecoming week. The big week. Yes. Um, so welcome to La I know this is your first year here. And I just wanted to get a little bit background information on you. So where did you grow up? So I grew up in Evergreen Park. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, over on the southwest side. Mm -hmm. um, and my family grew up in uh, the Beverly area. So nice. my grandfather is actually a 1941 graduate. So. That's awesome. So did you maybe have like an impact on when you got the sophomore maybe come back here? This, that, that definitely played an important role in it. Uh, being a third generation uh, Chicago Catholic League uh, football player, uh -huh. and having the opportunity to coach in the league was definitely a huge draw as to why I'm here. So you were a Carmel graduate, correct? Correct, yes. Okay, so you're one of our rivals. <laughs> and then after that, you went to um, Lake Forest College, correct? Yes, up okay. north. Mm -hmm. Nice. How'd you like that? Uh, beautiful up there. Uh, great, great atmosphere. Uh, awesome campus. Uh, it was a pleasure to go to Lake Forest. Did you play sports um, on your high school and college? I did, yes. So what sports did you play? Yeah. So in high school, I played football and ran track. <laughs> awesome. And then uh, in college, uh, we didn't have a track team, but uh, they had a, a handball team. So I, I was on the handball team. <laughs> okay. And we also had a rugby team. So I played some rugby uh, besides football. Awesome. So, yeah. And then you went to... Um, then you want to get master's in somewhere else, correct? Yes, I just uh, completed a master's about six years ago when I was living in California at uh, Concordia University out in Orange County. Awesome. Yeah. And so now you're a coach, as we know. Um, so who had the biggest influence on you becoming a coach? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, definitely the coaches that I've had before. Uh, you know, coaching uh, the actual game is just a little part of it, but really coaching the skills that are going to help you out for life is uh, what a bunch of coaches and teachers did for me throughout my playing career. Um, so I kind of felt a little bit obligated to give back, you know, what, what people gave to me. So. Yeah. And what's your favorite thing about coaching? Uh, working with the kids. The kids are the kids are number one. The developing of a, a, a people uh, in this high school age. When you come in as a fourteen year old freshman and you leave as an eighteen year old senior, there's a lot of changes that that happen across your lifetime. And uh, I, I feel like it's an imperative time to to have good people in your life, and, and that's what uh, keeps me ticking with high school kids. Yeah. So, do you see changes for for the boys on and off the field? 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, like, like we said, uh, the physical training to, to be an athlete is one part of it, but mm-hmm. socially as a per- person and spiritually, you know, uh, developing uh, people's faith is is important, and that's what we do here at Deal with that, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so when were you offered your first coaching job? My first coaching job was right after uh, I graduated from Lake Forest. Okay. So I, I went back to Mount Carmel uh, as a freshman coach. And uh, our quarterback on that team was their current head coach, Jordan Lynch, was, uh, <laughs> was a young 14-year-old back then. So. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then after that, where else, what were your other coaching experiences? So I, was, uh, I went to uh, Kentucky Wesleyan, worked with a former Lake Forest coach for two seasons. Okay. Um, and then one of my college teammates uh, was the head, took the head coaching job at Marist High School. So I was at Marist for two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I went back to Mount Carmel for two years. Uh, and then I was offered a job at a college down in Florida called Ave Maria University. Uh, and that turned into uh, becoming the head coach there for three seasons. Oh, awesome. Um, and then after that, I uh, went to Orange County, California. I was the defense coordinator at Orange Lutheran High School uh, out in Orange County uh, for five years. And then uh, this past season, I was at a small school, St. John's in Blackman, Louisiana, just outside of Baton Rouge. So and now I'm back in the Midwest after uh, <laughs> after a decade and uh, some warmer weather. Oh, yeah. So what made you come back to uh, big, big thing was family. Uh, you know, my mom, my uh, brother, his five kids, uh, all my aunts, uncles are all in the area. So being able to get closer to family um, and then also being able to co- coach football in the Chicago Catholic League is kind of a big deal. So, yeah, like your um, Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, yep. And do you have any last word for the boys as they end their football season? No, just proud of you guys. Keep grinding. Uh, re- represent Deal of Sale on everything that you do. And, and let, let's go get this done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now we'll dig it over to Coach Marasa and Mia Nunez. Thanks, Isela. Um, right now, I'm here with Coach Marasa. I'm Mia Nunez. You know, we're just going to ask her a couple questions about the volleyball team and how's everything going this year. So, Coach Marasa, my first question for you is how did you even get started in coaching? Um, I played at DePaul University, and I was fortunate enough at that time to uh, be mentored by my coach who was the head coach there and when he left I got the job at 23. I was one of the youngest division one coaches in the country at the time. That's amazing. Um, Obviously like you've set up such a great foundation here for volleyball. You just had a big win over Providence. You just got your 500th win yesterday. Um, What have you learned from your that first win to now your 500th win? I think in coaching it's always evolving. Like I tell the players, we're always learning. I go home and critique myself every day. I'm a pretty, you know, aggressive coach and very uh, forward. And that's not for everybody. Um, But I go home and what can I do better? I want them to be students of the game and I'm still learning all the time. Right. Yeah. Uh, You guys just had, like I said, that 500 win yesterday against Ignatius. That's huge. You just got this big win against Providence for your first time ever. Why do you think this team has been so successful in getting a, a kind of these first and um, winning these games that we haven't seen in the last couple of years? I do want to stand corrected. It wasn't my first oh. win over Providence. Okay. However, it was our first conference win over Providence. It. So we've beaten a couple of years ago when we had Frankie Bertucci and Isabella Lococo and uh, those girls, we did win the Oak Lawn Tournament that year, okay. beating Providence. However, it was our first conference win Got over it. Providence. Um, so our conference is huge, and the volleyball is just amazing. So those wins, just like over Ignatius, um, they don't always come very often. So. Yeah. It, it was a proud moment, I think, for the girls. This is our best start since the 2014-15 season with Mary Kate Burns and Natalie Aridia and Dominique Arceri and uh, Kara White and um, Carly Berenger, you know, and those names. If anyone knows De La Salle Volleyball, those are pretty big um, names here. Yeah. So um, this is our best start since that season, and it reminds me of that same team. They have good chemistry, they like each other, they know what it takes, and they're really driven. Yeah, I will say that um, in my four years here, I think that Dee has been recognizing volleyball more. I, try, I personally, I know I try to get more people out to the game, 
yesterday here against Ignatius, we had a pretty decent student section. Right. How do you think that contributes to the games? Do you think it helps your girls? If so, you know, how? Yeah, I think it's huge. I mean, especially now with coming off of COVID years, mm -hmm. socialization is so much more important. Um, I think than when I played, I mean, I played, you know, I, I'm a very competitive person, so I didn't really care what was around me, um, other than my parents, and my dad was my biggest supporter. But um, I think to the girls, their, the school spirit and seeing their peers and other sports teams, like the football program, the soccer programs out here, um, I think it does really excite them. And, and it definitely gets us over the hump. You know, I mean, volleyball is a game of momentum, and you want to stop these long runs from other teams or get big runs. And I think that helped, uh, especially yesterday, motivate us. I mean, when Gabby Piazzarelli came off the bench and served those aces and the crowd was behind her, it just was amazing. And it was electrifying, and I, I was really happy for her and for us. Right. <laughs> so. uh, my last question, too, is what's your biggest goal for this year? Uh, well, you know, it always has been, uh, you know, going downstate. So, um, you know, we've been close. And uh, we've made it to some sectional finals, and we just can't get over that hump. But I'd like to think this year that this team will be able to do it. Awesome. Well, thank you, Coach Marasa. Thanks so much. Thank you so much to Coach Quinn, Coach Marasa, and Quinn Dingan on joining us on our very first podcast. It was awesome having them. And thanks, you guys, for joining and watching us. Um, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until next time, go, go Meteors! Meteors.